Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. It's Christmas, the most wonderful time of the year. Getting around with your friends and family, sharing all the gifts that you love and cherish, the moments, having a wonderful Christmas dinner, you know, like beef, turkey, stuffing, <laughs> with potato salad, rice, <laughs> mashed potatoes, with gravy inside, or regular salad. Um, yeah, a lot of uh, delicious uh, feast too, with the dessert of cheesecake, pecan pie, pumpkin pie. You guessed it. And sending out some Christmas cards, singing Christmas carols, watching Christmas movies and specials. Um, roasting chestnuts on an open fire. Yeah, warm yourself uh, inside a fireplace at your local house or cabin. <laughs> yeah, you have a beautiful Christmas tree to set up with all the wonderful decorations that you set up and you add it like with all these ornaments and Christmas lights with all the gifts that you put underneath it at all before you have to open it. Then you hang around outside on a snowy day or snowy night, you know, going around skiing, you know, dressed up uh, so you can feel cool for the winter, that sort of thing. I mean, no doubt about it, Christmas has always been the most beautiful warmth, sharing the holidays for everyone. And it just feels very festive here. Okay. So now I'm going to review a holiday special that came out in 1970. A very rare one, too. But it had became a childhood staple of mine ever since I saw this on local television. It's called Santa and the Free Bears. A story about a park ranger tells the story of Three bears, at this rate, two young cubs, about the true meaning of Christmas, and the old legend of jolly old Saint Nick himself, Santa Claus. Um, the two cubs, of course, lives with their mother. They are just getting ready for a winter hibernation. Yeah, because that's part of uh, nature, right there. They you know, bears do hibernate in the winter, getting ready for the fall of the of a spring season. I mean, unless polar bears had to come around from the hibernation in the winter, so yeah. Now this special, I saw this as a kid. They play this every December on KTLA Channel 5 in Los Angeles. You know, coming from Southern California, which is living in Glendale. Well, I live in La Crescenta now, but it's part of the Glendale area, which in turn is part of the Los Angeles area, too. <laughs> uh, they play this every December. Sometimes they play it again with repeats. They even play this before the Hall. Hollywood Christmas Parade every year. And it always seemed like a great staple for everyone to watch. And I always love it. So, I mean, this was like a feel-good, enchanting Christmas tale that we have never seen before. And I always remember it. they had a different title sequence uh, before it all began. It's where they show... Um, um, get this. It just shows like just a uh, an archival clip of the of the park ranger's uh, cabin, and this is where we hear the the KTLA announcer at the time, uh, Ron Boltz, no longer with us. Sometimes they have Larry Van Nuys too, so they basically have two announcers, uh, where he narrates by saying KTLA presents an enchanting a holiday special, Santa and the Free Bears.
but it, it's been a classic treasure for everyone for those who haven't seen it but I know if you have seen it well this is why I'm about to do this review right now and be able to find this somewhere on YouTube because it's available it's also available on IMDb TV but it's been in public domain for years ever since it got released originally theatrically that time yeah because this is going to sound frankly uh, peculiar here but I think originally when this was going to come out I, they probably wanted to have a whole different setting of this whole particular animated tale was that this was going to be like sort of a, a full length feature for like 75 minutes at the most but actually they had to cut it down to 46 minutes uh, they pretty much rejected it due to the fact that it lacks a villain and I, I or something like that I don't know, I, I probably heard some information somewhere on, online. But at that point on, uh, I'm glad they kept it the way it is. I mean, 46 minutes seems exactly right. It feels more like a special than a movie. And it actually works so many levels, too. Plus, you got uh, uh, legendary actors, Hal Smith, uh, who's been best known for playing the drunken uh, Mayor Otis in the TV show, The Adding Griffin Show. Uh, the Andy Griffin Show, yeah. <laughs> he's always been so jolly and all. Uh, he's a voice actor himself. Um, he did the voice of Gyro Gearloose in the TV show uh, DuckTales, the original, in 1987. Yeah, where he's always been hired as a gadget man, you know, creating all these latest gadgets for Scrooge McDuck. Yeah, in case he needs him. <laughs> and he's done a lot of great work. Um, also to join in is Gene Vanderpile, best known for doing the voice of Wilma Flintstone on the Flintstones, as well as Rosie the Robot <laughs> on the Jetsons. And it's, it's actually a great delight. The animation looks uh, wonderful, too. Uh, this was actually uh, distributed by Warner Brothers uh, along with Seven Arts, but fortunately they, they don't have the rights anymore. They they sold it out of copyrights, so that's why we now had this special aired mostly on local TV. Uh, it also aired on the Family Channel as well originally, which was known as CBN. And yeah, long before it became Fox Family and, and ABC Family and now Freeform. And now I don't know if KTLA still plays it though because it's been so long. I think most of the time they, they could sometimes play it, other times they wouldn't. Um, but I guess they do it on, on a rare occasion. I mean, that's why it's so rare these days. I do have this on DVD. Uh, it's a public domain DVD. They also had it on VHS too. Uh, I bought it at the 9 and cent store. I can't seem to find it right now because apparently it's been hidden somewhere um, in maybe in one of my boxes or, or totes or containers they have or or it might be in one of my shows but I'm just having some difficult times. I mean, hey, I know. I'm sort of lazy sometimes but Hey, with all the stuff I buy, what can I do? <laughs> or whatever. I just want to have the best time to review this. So anyway, let's begin. It stars Hal Smith, and he's no longer with us, though. He passed away in 1994, along with Gene Vanderpile, who passed away uh, sometime, I think, 1999, I believe. Uh, Chris uh, Gilmore, Bobby Rita, Beth Goldfarb, and Brian Hobbs. Okay. It's written and directed by Tony Benedict, with the live action sequences by Barry Manon. The special begins starting with the live action sequences where we meet Uncle Hal, 
you know, Al Smith himself, where we begin to see close-ups of his entire house, you know, with a wonderful Christmas tree that's very huge. You see all these toys around, you know, like a toy car and all. And then you can even see a beautiful kitten who's uh, laying around next to the clock. And plus, we see him sitting in this wonderful chair, you know, warming up near a fireplace where he tells a never before Christmas story with his kids, his uh, nephew and niece, uh, both played by themselves, uh, Beth Goldfarb and Brian Hobbs, the story of how he played a park ranger, which is known as Mr. Ranger, who hangs around at a local park which is gathered around with all the animals around just you know just guarding and, and checking out the place yeah you know, where everyone has a picnic and all you know get to play have fun that sort of thing uh, during all these seasons like spring summer winter and fall uh, therefore during the winter season we meet three bears, uh, Naomi and Chinook, Nakomi and Chinook, the two bear cubs, and their mother, Nana. They're all played by Bobby Weeha, Chris Gilmore, which her real name is Annette Ferra, and Jean Vanderpile. Um, Mr. Ranger tells the story of the two cubs about the true meaning of Christmas which both uh, Chinook and Shikomi wanted to know about uh, so that's why they, they keep hanging around they didn't want to sleep during the winter even though this is indeed part of uh, nature where all bears hibernate on the winter season yeah Nana just wants to sleep she doesn't want to get angry at the kids, so that way they won't, they'll be able to wake up as soon as possible in the spring, because if they don't get any sleep, then they won't be able to wake up. That's part of the whole idea. The fact is, they never had a Christmas before, and this was their first time. I mean, they're sort of afraid that all this might be made up, so... Mr. Ranger tries to cheer them up, telling them about the real story about this whole particular holiday season, where it all began with uh, Mary and Joseph, the three wise men, you know, goodwill towards men, and baby Jesus who was born, which uh, leads to this wonderful holiday, you know, where you know, all the uh, shepherds and and everyone around, you know, sending gifts to all, hoping to have a miracle. And then we begin to see the actual story of Santa Claus living in the North Pole at his work at his workshop. Well, says Mrs. Claus, of course, <laughs> but mostly it's Santa who delivers all the gifts that. His elves had worked on, you know, building all the toys, so that way they'll be able to send all the gifts to all the little children out there around the world who believes him. So yes, Santa goes around on his sleigh, joining by his reindeers as they headed off, you know, delivering all the gifts to everyone on Christmas Eve until they wait until Christmas morning to finally get them what they want that they ask for you know, you know, through Santa's list whenever they're naughty or nice so that's so both Nakomi and, and Chinook were planning on actually having a wonderful Christmas um, joining by uh, Nana but Nana wouldn't believe 
uh, what they what Mr. Ranger said because he fought he made it all up and he they wanted to find out uh, you know what day would be Christmas Eve before Christmas heads off to well both Nakomi and Chinook were about to find a Christmas tree so they can set it up inside their cave well Nana was ready to fall asleep and then suddenly got woken up by them they went all the way to uh, Mr. Ranger's at the cabin which I know he was warming up and all he continues to tell the story about Santa and Christmas and hoping that this will cheer them up so at that point on just to make things special uh, Mr. Ranger decided to dress up as Santa Claus because apparently he was a department store Santa before and he was ready to uh, on Christmas Eve to deliver the gifts to the Cubs however it was it happened on a on one of the worst um, blizzard storm to head it off and apparently you know he got caught in in the middle of it and and wants to stay straight into the bus stop just to keep himself warm but then Nana had to tell the, the Cubs the truth that's that there really wasn't a Santa at all that Mr. Ranger was just dressing up as Santa hoping that just to pretend like he is and he'll be able to deliver them as soon as possible and that's where they felt disappointed that this will turn out to be the worst Christmas however a miracle appears was when Santa finally arrives straight to the cave and deliver all the gifts into the Christmas stockings and when Mr. Ranger finally shows up now the bears have finally known that it was him all along in the suit and then they realize that Santa really was here and now when they got over when the blizzard finally ended uh, now they discover Santa all the way up onto the moon you know continuing to deliver all the gifts and just saying ho 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 Merry Christmas yeah by the end of the special though that's where it ends with the live action sequence yes uh, already it was time you know the kids open their presents uh, the kitten was asleep and course <laughs> you see all the toys the close-ups of the tree and, and all just very wonderful it's indeed a, an enchanting Christmas tale um, the animation just looks um, very superb uh, for the 70s I mean this was sort of like late 60s early 70s uh, type of animation uh, it was done by uh, Jane uh, Takamoto, uh, joined by the rest of the, the animation departments, and you know how they, they put a lot of work into it. And um, the effects is, and they had a lot of uh, nice um, plus. It has a lot of nice shots too of the location of of the, uh, the Yellowstone Park too. You see the, this wonderful cavern and all the trees and the grassy fields and everything around. You see all the animals everywhere. Just what a local park should be. Um, they have some nice songs that they provide. It's a, a beautiful soundtrack that they got that tells the story. Of, of how this holiday season had to be and and I mean there's even some some nice animated sequences here like they, there's even uh, a shot where when the 
Mr. Ranger was falling asleep, suddenly he rubbed his eyes, he woke up and he noticed that uh, the flames were actually <laughs> singing too on, on the fireplace and, and then you see uh, another scene where both the, the cubs and their mother uh, were getting around you know, during that night, you know, just falling asleep and all. It's just wonderful. Uh, I know it, it's going to be pretty short though for this video, but I, I just want to keep it straight. Uh, so if you get a chance to watch this, um, I already mentioned already, uh, check this out on IMDb TV. Uh, look for it on YouTube. And um, hey, if you want to watch this on physical media, uh, try to track down the VHS tape or DVD somewhere on online or maybe at your local fifth store or any other store and see if you'll be able to see it for yourself. So there you go. That's Santa and the Free Bears. Um, and I give the special five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora. Have a wonderful and safe Christmas with you and your family, especially in this certain times. But let's hope and pray for a miracle. And I'll see you later. Bye.